So we're back in James Watt Dock. We're really, really relieved to be here. It's been the best part of six months and, and we've not had any opportunity to check the boat and make sure she's working. And, you know, um, we were slightly worried that it was going to be horribly mouldy down below. Um, we left, she we left, we left Sheffield at uh, four o'clock yesterday, just before four, and had a very nice drive up to, uh, to Greenwich. Took us five hours with a, with a break which was lovely, really quiet drive. Um, and then filled with trepidation, we got on board and it was good as gold. The heating was on. The, there was very little, uh, um, there's a tiny patch of mold on one of the seats which came straight off, which is no problem at all. So that was a huge relief. Uh, and uh, we had the best night's sleep ever. So we're so excited to be here and looking forward to our, our 2021 adventure. Well, it's our first day on board and we have decided that the job of the day is to clean the decks. They're looking pretty green and slimy after six months with no care. Um, I don't know if you can see how dirty she looks. No longer is she cream. She's got a lot of green slime. So it's down to scrubbing. We're gonna get a really good wash all over, get all this green slime off the hull. It runs all the way down. And then hopefully when we break for lunch, we're looking a lot better. Alan's gone in search of buckets and soapy water. As you can see, we're making progress with the decks. Skipper's very hard at work. I've been demoted to tea lady. <laughs> Promoted. Promoted? Can't believe you said that. And there's the grime disappearing. So satisfying. We've spent quite a couple of hours, good long hours on her this morning. There's still plenty to go out, isn't there, Smith? There is. We've managed the bow and down along the side decks. Next, we've got to work on the cockpit. But we are definitely going to have a tea break and a nice biscuit. Well, this is the really, really grimy bit. And Alan has already scrubbed this bit. Look, it's so much better. Well, we've finished scrubbing the decks this morning. The weather got pretty stormy and wet at lunch, so we went in, had a bit of a rest. We've been to a cafe and had tea and cake, and now we're enjoying a walk along Inverkip front on this lovely coastal path. So many great places to explore. We really needed to stretch our legs, especially our backs. They're quite sore after that scrubbing. I think tomorrow we're planning to put some sails on. Uh, we've got to re-thread the halyard because somebody name and no names oh hang on a minute me drop the old one down the mast so up the mast i go to fix it so that should be an entertaining bit of filming for now we're just going to enjoy the walk and these beautiful views and there's alan lovely path lovely view happy days so in front of us, you can see two rather large bags of braid on braid line. These are our different halyards and there are sheets, our control sheets for our sails. There's also our reefing lines in there. These are all nicely cleaned and washed, some new lines. Unfortunately, in the mast are the old lines. So I've got to go through and re-thread all these lines. It's like playing with spaghetti. Wish me luck. So I'm making progress, changing the halyard lines. This one is our jib sheet control line. Um, I made a bit of a mistake last time I changed the main halyard line and unfortunately it dropped all the way down the mast and we completely lost it. So I do need to go to the top of the mast and re-thread it, but that one's for a bit of a later clip, I think. This one hopefully will be more straightforward. Effectively, I've got to stitch the two lines so they're butt to butt. And then apparently the step that I didn't do was put tape around it to make sure they don't come undone. So that's what I'm aiming to do today. Apparently. Apparently. <laughs> so the stitching is done. Made a cradle all the way around. And now I'm gonna tape it. Hopefully this will stop it coming undone and I won't lose it in the mast. I really don't wanna lose any more lines in the mast. There we go. All done. Ready for the Whilst we've been replacing all the lines, the control lines for the sails, Alan's been working on making sure all of the 
shackles and things that we've got that make it all run freely, freely and in good condition. I think he's found one that's not good and he's struggling to repair it. Working at all. It's not, uh, it's not spinning at all. Well, that's not much good, is it? We might have to look at how to get that changed. Definitely. There's always something on a boat. There's always something that you didn't think of that needs repairing. We're just getting ready to um, send Tish up the mast again. So she's sorting out the, the lazy jacks. Um, always an interesting job. When you've washed them, you've then got to remember which, which lazy jack goes where and how, where, which one the longest is. And, uh, all good fun. She spent an hour and a quarter at the mast, top of the mast yesterday. We haven't got any video of that because um, I was manning both the lines, you know, the, the, the line and the safety line. But it was, uh, it was quite a, a long job. But she succeeded, she got the main halyard back, so we're really pleased about that. So this morning's job is we're putting the lazy jacks in. Yesterday we did the halyard. And I did promise to her she wouldn't have to go up the mast again for a while, so good to my word. There she is. Uh, lazy jacks are now the first part of it's tied in. So I'm going to start bringing her down and then uh, uh, we'll finish it off with the sail bag. Fingers crossed. Alan's just coming back from the car. We've been up the mast, we've done our threading and now it's time to put the sails up. And this is just the jib. The main halyard is much bigger and that's coming after this one. So it's uh, fairly early in the morning on uh, Friday morning and perfect weather for putting the main sail up. We're going to put the, um, the sail bag on and then, uh, uh, and then the lazy jacks and then we'll, we'll work on the main. Tish and I can't quite agree how long it's going to take. I think it'll take about an hour and a bit and Tish thinks it'll take about two hours. So we're going to have a competition as long as she doesn't drag her heels because you know how competitive she is. We're going to um, time lapse it and see if I'm right or if yeah, it's incredibly unlikely Tish is right. <laughs> So here's Alan, we have a small leak in our dinghy, it's in the port tube. Um, in fact we had this leak uh, a few years ago when we were on holiday in France, uh, it started to leak so we have decided to remove the patch which Alan has done with a hairdryer to heat up the glue and then gently peeled it off. He's now preparing the, service, the surface with an abrasive, um, very gently and it will remove any old glue and then we can put on a new hypalon patch uh, with the resin glue that we've got, which is the correct glue to repair it. Hopefully it will be as good as new then for this whole next season. So this is the glue, it's a two part epoxy that we're gonna to use to patch the bottom of the dinghy. The tricky bit is it's got to be a 25 to one ratio. So we're just trying to work out what that might look like. Just using a bit of old plastic tray to do the mixing. 
Alan's trying to keep it very clean. It's the sticky, horrible stuff. We hope. We hope. We want it to be very sticky, actually. <laughs> we don't want to leak, do we, at the end of this job? We want it to stay inflated. Last season, this uh, tube just slowly deflated every three days or so, and we had to keep blowing it up, which was a little bit frustrating and not ideal. So we're hoping to do a lot more anchoring this season than that. will only be possible if the dinghy works properly. And also, we're very excited about trying our new e-propulsion outboard. We can't do that until we've repaired the dinghy. So we will hopefully be having fun days with our new outboard in the dinghy soon. Here we are, applying the glue. Or at least Alan's doing all the hard work. I'm just thinking about cups of tea. <laughs> Maybe we could celebrate after this when the job is done. But having said that, we've already had three or four cups of tea and a whole piece of cake each. The stingy's going to sink if we keep eating like this. Well, okay, it wasn't a whole piece of cake. It was a whole cake that we bought from Tesco's. But it was small. It wasn't a big birthday cake. It was only a small loaf cake. Half a cake each. But we still ate half a cake each. This is true. We need to make sure our wetsuits still fit us at the end of the season. <laughs> so you're putting glue on both the dinghy and the patch? You've got to make sure you get the glue all the way up to the edges. Otherwise... If you don't get even glue throughout the patch, the air will find a route out and escape and the repair won't work. So this is probably the most important bit. Spent a lot of time preparing and cleaning the surface, braiding it with a bit of sandpaper. Fingers crossed it will work. Okay, so the patch is finally in position. Hopefully, it's going to take. How did you get it nice and smooth? Um, with the back end of a screwdriver and my Swiss Army, my trusty Swiss Army pen knife. Um, and, and that's the challenge, really. Is you've got to. It's a. There are creases, and if you don't fill the creases, that's where the leak is. So there's a good chance if it's not filled, it'll leak again. Anyway, we'll see. Fingers crossed, then. Fingers crossed, yeah. Hi guys, I was out here just doing some washing, getting the last green off the deck and cleaning the fenders and trying to clean the sides of the hull when this weather front moved in and it started pouring with chunks of snow. Let me show you what I can see. And as ever, you get the camera out and it calms down. Oh, but it's pretty wet out here. The boat is pretty wet. The dinghy's patch is probably not going to dry very well. It looks like the cloud that we did see might be clearing. Very quick weather patterns here. They come in and they're gone within five minutes. I was just trying to scrub this bit of deck down here. It's clean now. Alan, on the other hand, is being a wimp. So whilst I'm out here in all my wet weather gear, where are you, Smith? I'm hiding from the rain. Say that again and stick your head out. I'm busily uh, preparing some very important stuff that isn't wet, isn't pouring with rain. <laughs> He's such a wimp, he won't even come out in the rain. I'm on, pretty wet. I'm no, fine. not Smith. Here He's got are. all his oilies on down here and his wellies. I'm not, He's a not coming out. I haven't even got wellies on. Bet you have. How much? <laughs> <laughs> so Skippy decided to help out in the end. It's got to be done properly, sweetheart, that's the trouble. Could have we done properly? I can't leave it to the crew. Who's the one on their knees? Exactly. <laughs> Being prepared to put that extra effort in. That's what makes the difference. <laughs> Here we go, take two. So we're hoping now that Tish's whole head is going to be in. I'll come down a bit lower, there we are. The whole head's in the picture. Um, but the idea is you can see us and the holy lock behind us, which is where we sailed into uh, last season. 
uh, and then it's a fantastic view from up here there's a uh, a monument over there to the free french which we're going to have a look at in a minute um, and this is called lyle hill, hill lyle hill in greenwich yeah quite a, a pretty spot that we've come up to have a look at while well, we've still got the car and we're still in jungle so we thought we'd also like to do a sort of 360 and this is where things can go horribly wrong because we're not very good at this. So are we ready? We're ready. Okay, if we lose Here we go, here we go. Oh, this is yeah, tense stuff now. Oh, we're rocking it now. Oh, look at this. Oh, we've made at least 90 degrees. I know, but do we know if you're in the picture <laughs> or not? <laughs> Looking good. Okay, that's Should it. have some nice gorse now oh, behind us. Oh, very tense. Full 180. Oh, here we go. Look over there. It is a nice no, spot. I shouldn't do that because I can't see where the angle of the camera is. <laughs> you did enjoy this. <laughs> There we go. Okay. I hope you enjoyed the view. So we're taking the path across the top of Lyle Hill. Alan's a little bit in front. And you can see the Free French Monument just appearing in front. It's like a white, sort of an anchor shape. It's difficult to see from this particular viewpoint, but when we get there, we'll take some more footage so you can see it more clearly. So we've arrived at the monument. I'm just going to read the plaque. Like I said, quite big. It's in quite an imposing position on the top of the hill. But it's funny because we hadn't really noticed it before. Now you're up here, you can see just how big it is. And you can see the views around it. Stunning spot. This is a, a monument in Greenwich to the officers and men of the Free French Navy, the brave uh, individuals who fought in the battle for the Atlantic between 1940 and 1945 um, and uh, who set sail from, from Granick. It was um, um, sponsored by the Free French Navy and local donations. It's a really lovely monument. And background, as we look out, I don't know if you can see, but there is a Navy vessel in water. Just in the middle there. Quite fitting. <laughs> <laughs> 